Hey guys, welcome to my newest video for today, um, October 25th, um, this will be part 3 or 4, I think 4 in my 31 days of horror marathon, and this is the last Tuesday I do this, because Halloween is next Monday, and, um, I'll be doing it, well actually, I lied, because November 1st I'll show it off, blah, I can't think today. Uh, not a lot in the last week, because I do had, I did have, um, a couple of sick days, and the fact that one day I really needed to catch up on sleep, to the point that I slept for 12 hours, um, so I will just get started on showing you guys what I watch. Uh, first one off is one of the greatest vampire movies of all time. Needs no introduction, and that, of course, is The Lost Boys. This one is... You, you guys know, it's an awesome little movie. Um, I never thought of this as a cult movie, as some people have, but I don't know why a lot of people have, but it is just an awesome movie. Uh, this is what started me and my l love of vampires back in 87, at the age of 7. And it hasn't stopped since. So, there we go. 1987's The Lost Boys. Uh, next one up <laughs> is one I get laughed at because it's in my top 100 favorite films of all time. And it's, a, it's number 16. And it's a fun throwback to 50s B-horror films. And that, of course, is 1989's Tremors. <laughs> I fucking love this movie. A bunch of us, when we were kids, we loved this movie. We would quote lines from it at school. Um, it was just so funny. <laughs> it still holds up after almost um, uh, 20 years later. It still holds up. And it's just a fun little film. Um, don't even bother watching parts 2, 3, and 4 or the TV show. Just stick with this. You'll be happy that you did. There we go, 1989's Tremors. And the next one up is one of the Dark Castle movies. And one that I actually like. I don't know why everybody hates it. That is 2001's 13 Ghosts. I'd actually really like to see the original film uh, someday if I can find it. But yeah, I've always liked this one. I don't know why. I regret not seeing it in the theater, which I think would have been kick-ass. But yeah, I always liked this one. I thought it was a really uh, groovy little film. Uh, there we go. Uh, 2001's 13 Ghosts. Uh, next one up is one of uh, Wes Craven's very underrated gems. And actually, the very first Wes Craven film I ever saw back in 1991 when I was only um, 11 years old and that is The People Under the Stairs and this actually because uh, my two cousins um, uh, Sarah and Vinny we actually went and rented this and they actually let us rent it I mean we're like between the ages of 5 and 11 and they're letting us rent it um, and it was funny because the other two were scared, and I was not. I was just like, this is so cool, I like it. <laughs> but then that, that shows for the fact that my two cousins, Megan and Nicole, screamed like little, um, little girls during Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, and I just sat there laughing. <laughs> but this is a good, good movie. I don't know why a lot of people hate it. Like, it's a... It's fun. It's a fun little yarn, as they say. But yeah, this has always been a movie I've, the Wes Cravens, I have always liked. And wish I would have gotten a little more recognition. So there we go, 1991's The People Under the Stairs. Next up, another vampire movie that I love, based on a graphic novel. And that, of course, is 2007's 30 Days of Night. Like, you think I would have had a problem with all the, like, total jagged fangs, but I never did. But I just thought this movie was creepy and gory, and it was really good. Um, and actually, the director, Laugh All You Want, David Slade, who directed Hard Candy before this, he went on to direct uh, t the third Twilight movie, Eclipse, 
which is probably why that is the best film in the series so far, is it's actually directed by someone who's done a vampire film and knows what they're talking about. Um, but uh, I, I don't have any desire to see the direct-to-DVD sequel, because a lot of the times if it's like that, a direct-to-DVD sequel, I won't even bother because I know it will be shit. But it was fun. The ending was really depressing, though. I'm still trying to get my, my dad to watch this, because he'll watch vampire movies, but he hasn't watched this yet. I don't know why. So there we go, 2007's 30 Days of Night. And I finally finished this bad boy off, um, TV show-wise, and that is uh, Forever Night, complete third season. Finally finished this off. I'd been putting it off because I had had bouts of sickness, so and I didn't want to get into watching it and then turning it off and then la da 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 da. Uh, but yeah, like I've said with the other two, I so recommend this. Um, it is a really good vampire show, so hopefully I got somebody's interest in this. Um, but yeah, the, the last episode is so much of a downer. Um, because they basically left it open to say what what happened, were we bringing it back, but I mean, shit, after 15 years, there's no way it's bringing it back. I think half of these guys have moved on. Um, so hopefully some of you have got interested in this, because it's a really cool vampire show. It actually uses Toronto, Canada as Toronto, not as Boston or some other place, but yeah. You guys should check it out if you love vampire television shows. So there we go, the complete third season of Forever Night. Next one up is one film by John Carpenter I think should have got a hell of a lot more recognition, recognition than it did, and it's very much a, an underrated gem, and that is 1995's In the Mouth of Madness. I fucking love this movie. It's in my top five favorite Carpenter films ever made. Wanted to see this because, you know, John Carpenter fan, and I'm also a fan of Sam Neill, and it looked very, very fucked up. Um, and I, it was just, I got to see this, uh, I didn't get to see this in the theater. I'm thinking of Event Horizon, actually. But it's such a downer that this wasn't well received back in the day. Um, it's kind of it's kind of grown since then. It's got like a little bit of a cult following, and it's a really really good film. I don't know why nobody went and saw it or enjoyed it, but it's really really cool. So, there we go. Nineteen ninety fives in the mouth of madness. Uh, next one up actually is the very first horror film to make me leave the theater, and it's not because of the gore, because God knows I can handle gore. It is because of the goddamn organ music that kept freaking me out. Um, and that is 1999's remake of House on Haunted Hill. Like when they put Jeffrey Rush in that weird machine and the reanimator guys bouncing the basketball and coming out and it had that organ music. I was going insane. I, I, that, that, was, that did it. I had to leave because that fucking music just creeped the shit out of me. Um, this is probably up there, in my opinion, with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is one of the best horror film remakes ever. I'm saying that note without watching the original film, though I really would like to. Um, this is a really good movie. It's got a good cast. Um, and I, I just kind of wish I would show my dad this, but I think he would get fucked up over it. Uh, I again direct to sequel, direct to DVD sequel that I have no interest in seeing. Anyway, I've heard it's absolute shit, but I did get to see the like I said in the theater with my mom. My mom got a laugh because I left, but hey, I got the I got the last laugh because I got to sneak in and watch the rest of Three Kings with my dad. <laughs> so there we go, 1999's House on Haunted Hill, and next one up is another film from 1998. That even my dad liked. We went, we, all three of us had seen this in the theater, and all three of us loved it. It's a fun movie, and that is Idle Hands. 
I fucking love this movie. It is. You can't take it seriously. Let's put it. It's like some action films where you have to leave your brain at the door. That's what you have to do with this. Because if you go in thinking, oh, it is kind of. It does have some gory moments, but if you expect buckets and buckets of blood, like I know a lot of people did, you, you went to the wrong movie. This is uh, like Tremors, comedic horror, and it is just so goddamn. Especially these two, Seth Green and. Um, What's his name? Oh, I don't I don't know his name, but he's in The Mighty, which came out in 1998. But, oh, God, those two were just so funny. It's, so if you haven't seen this, I so recommend it. It is so much fun. So there we go, 1999's Idle Hand. And the next one is not a DVD, but a ticket stub. Uh, Saturday, my mom and I went to go see... Paranormal Activity 3, and uh, it was, I liked it, um, 8 out of 10 from me. The only problem was the last half hour, I got the worst goddamn headache in the world. It got to the point where I almost, I missed a lot of the last half hour because I kept having to close my eyes and rub my temples. I was, like, that's how bad I was. I got, I got, at least I got to see the ending. No, I'm not telling you, so go away. <laughs> but I did enjoy it. The only thing that really pissed me off, and I think a lot of you will feel the same way, is 90% of what was shown in the trailer was not in the final film. And there was a lot of stuff I would have loved to see. God, maybe, if we're lucky, it will be on the DVD when it comes out. But I'm pretty... Well, I'm pretty sure Paramount has got a lot of shit for that. Like, hey, 90% of the trailer is not in the film. What the fuck? Um, and if you're wondering why it says air miles, it's because I had uh, used my air miles to um, get free movie passes. So with this, my mom and I got to see this and not pay a damn dime. Like, two admissions, two popcorns, or two drinks and a popcorn for 190 points. You can't go wrong. So there we go. Uh, this year's Paranormal Activity 3. This year's? That's lame. But that's okay. Uh, next one up, another. I've been watching a lot of John Carpenter movies uh, during this horror film thing of mine. And next one up is one of his that is a complete underrated gem, like In the Mouth of Madness. And actually, it was his most su su uh, successful film of the 1990s. And, oddly enough, like, up here, you have to be 19 to go to clubs, bars, and shit like that. And that, some of you may know, or may not know, that is not my thing. So when I turned 18, I uh, didn't want to do anything big. I just wanted to go to the movies. So we act, and this was my, uh, my birthday choice. <laughs> and that is 1998's John Carpenter's vampires one that all three of us could go and enjoy because like i said my dad loves vampire movies and this ended up being one of his favorites um it is a such a good um great film it's got like that wild wild west like not, not the movie wild wild west but that kind of west uh feel to it which which works the cast is great, though it's so weird seeing James Woods play basically the hero, because he's always like this asshole, like in Casino or or stuff like that. I thought he was I thought he was really good. Um well so did a lot of people because there was actually people who thought he should have been nominated for an Oscar for this movie. That and that's nuts. <laughs> Cause not that many people are nominated for horror films. Um the rest of the cast is really great. I love Carpenter's music. Like, uh, he's done basically done a lot of the scores to his own films, and they are fantastic. Um, but yeah, um, this, this, this is high on my list of favorite John Carpenter movies. I, don't, I know some people don't like it. It's the same as with Ghosts of Mars. Nobody likes that, and I always did. Um, so if you haven't seen this, you're in for a rare rare treat. So there we go, 1998 John Carpenter's Vampires. And last one up is more of a suspense thriller 
Well, some people say it's a suspense thriller, and I always, because of the subject matter, I always thought of it as a horror film. And I haven't watched it in a very long, basically since I bought the DVD back in 2001. Um, but I figured, what the hell, it gives me an excuse to watch it. And that, of course, is 2001's From Hell, the Jack the Ripper story. See, like, you watch the movie and you see some of the subject matter, you're like, this is a suspense thriller, considering what, what happens to the ladies in this. Um, yep, really, really good. Hadn't seen this in a very long time. Um, but, of course, really wanted to see this because I love Johnny Depp, so, and the cast was really good. I love Ian Holm in anything he is in. He looked like a possessed man in this at the end. Won't give it away. But I always, I did enjoy this the couple of times I saw it, the once in the theater and once on video, but I never got around to re-watching it again. And I'm actually glad I did not put this on the pawn list because it it got put there, and then it got put back into the collection, on the pawn list, back in the collection, it was back, back and forth, and I said, oh, fuck it, I'll keep it. So, very happy I did. So, there we go, 2001's From Hell. And that's all the ones I've, my slippers, <laughs> all the ones I've watched. Uh, I really gotta get my act together and start watching some of the blind buys. But, because I have watched blind buy horror films that freak me out and then I can't sleep. I'm just going to wait till my day's off. <laughs> so, um, yep, that's it. Um, hopefully um, on payday I can go out and buy the Future Shop Blu-ray Steelbook for Jurassic Park and I'll be very happy camper. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, that is it. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Watch a shitload of movies. And of course, as always, rate, comment, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.